welcome to the Business Fighter with Henry Penix. Henry has been the CEO, founder, and consultant to hundreds of companies worldwide. He retired a multimillionaire, financially independent at the age of 35. Henry grew up a preacher's son and was thrown in jail three times for various altercations. He knows what it means to come from nothing and have to fight his way to the top. Henry is the business fighter who will teach you strategic skills for winning in business and in life. Don't just spectate, participate. It's time to get in the ring. Hey guys, Henry Penix, uh, the business fighter. I'm, I'm here with an amazing entrepreneur first, real estate investor second. He's going to tell us kind of how he got there, some of the minefields that he's avoided in his 17 years of doing this. And I'm, I'm so happy to welcome Don Costa to the, the Henry Penix business fighter. Don, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Get my words yeah, out this yeah. morning. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I, uh, a quick story, a little bit off topic. I'll never forget your last name because I had a guy who just bought a, a very large boat and he wanted me to, to help name it. And so the final name we came up with was Costa Lada. So, <laughs> so right. I'll, I'll never, I'll never, uh, I'll never forget your last name, but uh, but anyway, from our short conversation just a few minutes ago, I, I learned that that you were an entrepreneur first, real estate investor second. You do flip top, you flip homes. You've been doing a long time. You've been very, very successful, but you're an entrepreneur at heart first. And you said right. you had been through a few struggles. I said that's awesome. Let's save it for the podcast. Give me, give me kind of your path to where you are today. Some of those gotcha moments, what you learned from them. And uh, let's drop some golden nuggets on some of the some of the listeners today. Yeah, well, like I mentioned, you know, I'm an entrepreneur at, at the core. That's 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 who I am. And real estate's my widget. And so early on in my life, I realized that I was not going to be somebody that could be defined by a box or the clock, right? The nine to five. Like mm -hmm. I had to be somebody that built something. And um, I tried different things that didn't necessarily work. Um, I tried doing some sales that didn't. I didn't wasn't really successful at. I tried opening cell phone stores. Um, and they, they, they were actually, some of the things they did were, you know, somewhat successful in their own right, but they weren't, they didn't fit like my need. And so I've owned nightclubs, um, in a restaurant, um, and different things along the way. So, but real estate was when I, when I found it, it was the widget, right? The thing that really got me excited because it allowed me to create income and also it allowed me to kind of feed my ADD, you know, cause it was constantly <laughs> moving, right? Something so, new every day, right? <laughs> something new every day. So, um, and it just, it, it fit like a glove. It was the first time where I could actually go door knocking and talk to sellers and sell because I was passionate about the product and it allowed me to build something. So it kind of fit everything I was looking for. So that's kind of how I landed in it. So, um, like I said, started door knocking, got in my car and I just drove and door knocked on, on properties or in foreclosure and what had a knack for, um, working with sellers, working out their problems and making deals happen. So for the first time, the first business venture I'd been in, I made a lot of money real quick. I'd had others where I'd made money, but this one, I made a lot of money fast. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. <laughs> something, and, and for me, it was both, you know, it was, it was proof of concept. It was proof that I could have something better, but at the same time, not coming from money, uh, I became full of myself. My head got big. I thought everything I turned, touched turned to gold. Yeah. And, um, you know, I really thought that, uh, that I was the reason why I was making so much money. And if you remember 2004, five and six, the real estate market, um, the economy as a whole back then, yep. anybody could make money you pick up a rock and throw it at, throw it at a house and turn a profit. Right. right? I mean, I've, I didn't I've heard run, that from so many people. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't run a good business. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was me. I didn't run a good business. I wasn't a good leader. Um, and I was arrogant and i spent the money as fast as it came in. So, um, the first round of real estate in, in investing for me made a lot of money and was a jerk. And it, when 2008 hit, I wasn't ready for it and I lost it all. Um, mostly wow. just cause I wasn't a good business person. Right. Back then, if you made a mistake on a property, the market hid your mistake and you made more money. It hid your yeah. flaws. Make it up on the next one or the next one or the next one. Well, it not make it up on that one. Like if it took me too much longer to, to turn a property than I should have taken, I made more money. So whereas in a tip, typical market, you know, you, you have interest expenses and different things along the way that end up eating into your profits. It hit a lot of that. So one of the things I like to encourage people when, especially when you're in 
in good markets and it may not be real estate, it could be any business. Um, if you're in a good cycle in that business, you really got to look and see how you are as a business operator. Uh, and, and don't let the market hide your flaws because um, if you're a good operator first, a good leader along the way, and then you're running a solid business and something changes in the market, you're going to be more likely to sustain those changes than if you're, if the market's hiding the fact that you're just right. a bad business person. So for me, it was hiding a lot of flaws. And when the flaws became exposed, they became exposed hard. And I, I literally lost everything to the point where I had a million dollar judgment against me uh, when I came up for air in 2012. So oh my God. Yeah. when you came up for air, when I came up for air. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I hit hard. Um, and it's a story I like to share, you know, going to Taco Bell with my family and my card, not clearing, having to leave, leave Taco Bell with my family empty handed. And my son asked me why the mean guy wouldn't give us our food. I mean, I had, oh, you know, dude. my wife called me from the grocery store cause our debit card wouldn't clear, you know, going to the gas station with quarters. Like I hit hard. Yeah. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me as a human being, as a husband, as a father, as a business owner. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, no, I and, and guys, I hope you're listening to Don today because it takes a real man to admit his faults and it takes a great leader to speak from his heart and want to teach others so they don't fall in the same holes. Right. Like this is big, guys. You I mean, Don paid millions of dollars to get this message to you. I hope you I hope you're listening and I hope you hear it loud and clear um man that's that that story in itself is, a, is an entire podcast and, and I'm, I'm sure we could run on any any vein uh throughout there but how if i'm an entrepreneur listening to you today and i say well the, the market's okay we've got an election coming up there's some things that are kind of shifty how do i know if it's me or the market whether i'm good or bad like how, what's that litmus test what how could you look at other factors outside of your industry or in your industry that tell you it's just the market or it is your leadership? Well, you know, I, I think one test is, you know, is your team independent of you or are you having to touch everything your team does? If you're having to touch everything your team does and everything has to be approved through you, then you don't have a real business. You're a bottleneck in your organization and you are holding your business back. So first thing you got to do as a leader, and, you know, before you look at anything else is look in the mirror and go, okay, do, do I, do I trust my team? Can I count on my team? Do I know they have my back and do I allow them to have my back? Mm -hmm. And round number one, I, what I didn't, everything, everything had to come through me. I was a bottleneck. I slowed things down. Decisions weren't being made unless I'd made them. And I was just a horrible leader all the way through. And so that was, that was issue number one. Um, issue number two is, you know, you don't want to take things for granted, you know, um, it just overall, if you're making really, really good money and you start thinking, well, everything I touch turns to gold or this is never going to end, that should be a red flag for you. It wasn't a red flag for me. And now I look back on it and it should have been because everything happens in cycles, any industry, everything happens in cycles. So there's a lot of internal things you got to do before you start looking outside, obviously, to see whether or not, you know, you are running your business properly, you know, KPIs, you know, um, key performance indicators in your operation, you know, success leaves clues. And there are things that happen in your operation that should be very clear. And, um, you know, you should be able to duplicate them and you should be able to understand them and see them happen. Right. Um, and so, you know, are you tracking your numbers? You know, if you're spending a certain amount of marketing dollars, you know, are you tracking the results through to see if the results are consistent and something that you can duplicate? And, you know, and most a lot people of don't do that, dude. I've seen people waste tens of thousands of dollars on marketing alone and they don't track the results. Why they don't, I have no idea. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, and you should you should know. I mean- And there's it, tools to do that with now, right? There's there, yeah. And and I mean, as, as much as an Excel spreadsheet, if you have to get simple and just make sure that you, you're you tracking things. And look, I'm not a data geek by any means. Like I'm an entrepreneur, I'm ADD, I love creating things. I don't wanna get caught in the weeds. But man, when I started looking at the data in my business, and the fact that if I spent $1, it gave me X amount of dollars return in this particular marketing channel. And I started, I started getting even worse. I started split testing down and figuring out, okay, because right. I send postcards, right? This postcard with this color to this list gets a better result profitability wow. wise than this one with this color. And wow. that stuff gets exciting. And then you can yeah. start pouring fuel on that fire. And yeah. then you can, you go into, okay, then you go into diminishing returns. So now you know that if I get to X amount of marketing dollars in this particular segment, 
it stops being profitable. And you can see that and you can start to manage your business at a whole different level. But that's, that's, again, that's another podcast. <laughs> so. and, and guys, I want you to, I want you to get what he just said, because a lot of people don't know that a lot of people think if you spend a hundred and get 200, then you spend a thousand, get 2000, then you spend five and get 10, but you spend 20 and get 10 yeah. <laughs> or, or, or 21, right. you know, that's diminishing return. And, and you, you, you have to watch that too, because once you hit those peaks, it's time to split test or go into another vein and, and, and try mm -hmm. another, uh, try another segment out. Yeah. So, you know, so it, essentially getting more intimately involved with your own business and your own operation is step number one. And then you can start looking at the external factors, you know, what's going on in the market and how you can navigate that yourself, how you, how you can differentiate yourself from other services out that are like you to compete better. You know, you start to layer these things on. Um, but did you have accountability in your life? Like at, at that time back then when you were cocky and all that, like, like you indicated, uh, did, did you have an accountability person or group in your life? And, and if you didn't, would you suggest something like that? I did not. And I absolutely do suggest it. So, um, I run a mastermind community. I'm part of masterminds. Um, and I, I think that that is one of the true, yeah. Um, reasons why I'm able to be stable and successful now, you know, the, uh, mass, there's, there's, there's coaches, there's accountability partners, there's masterminds in any one of those things can, um, can really make you successful. I I've dropped quite a bit of weight actually in the last couple of years, I have an accountability coach. I check in with every week for my weight. Um, I'm part of a mastermind community. What's cool about a mastermind community is I'm teaching people and I'm learning from people. So there's accountability there. Oh, yeah. And you know, it's, and when you surround yourself with, with, you know, successful people that are, that, uh, when you have somebody to teach and somebody to chase or somebody to kind of, kind of hold you accountable, that dynamic, it's like pouring fuel on the fire again. I hate to use that term again, but it really does it help you level up to, uh, you know, to the best of who you can be. Yeah. I, I love the phrase, people will never do what you expect, but they'll always do what you inspect. So if you have somebody who's helping you stay accountable and, and you're even keeping yourself accountable to your numbers, whether it's that Excel spreadsheet or it's, a, it's a, uh, an algorithm system that, that shows you exactly where pennies are going in marketing, like if you inspect that and hold yourself accountable and keep those accountability measures, I think I'm, I'm with you, man. That, that's a true, true way to true success. 100%, 100%. So, surround yourself, just in, 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 at a minimum, just surround yourself with the right group of people um, it is that first step in that. So, you, you know, I love that because how many times do you go out and, and sometimes, especially as guys, you get the testosterone going, you get the measuring contest going and, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know, I'm doing this, 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 and, and it almost makes you feel good to be the biggest fish in the pond. Right. But what I've, you know, it speaks to our ego and everybody's got it. If you say you don't, you, you're lying. <laughs> so there's uh, other people have it in, in control and, and right. just, just how well you control it. But that's what makes us humans. But um, a, a lot of people who, who don't have that accountability or whatever, uh, and, and they're the big fish in the big, in the little pond and they feel good about it. You know, I've learned once you start to, to get even with or, or feel like you're outgrowing those people around you jump into a bigger pond as fast as you can or get around bigger fish so that so that they can help you level up you know like like mm -hmm. it's I, I tell people all the time the greatest sports cars in the world have to pull over every once in a while and get gas like where are you pulling over and filling your tank who can you look up to as leadership where you're not the big guy in the room you're you're like among at least peers and a few people hopefully scattered in there that uh, you know, blow you away. Like I, I love that. I only called one guy a mentor in my life, uh, Paul J. Meyer. He passed away not too long ago. Well, gosh, I guess it's been maybe four or five years ago now. And a uh, uh, billionaire uh, donated to a lot of colleges and all that. And 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 he always instilled that in me to to have the accountability to uh, you know to grow. And and every time I thought I was getting like really cool and. I would say, Paul, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I just put in this two, $3 million project and, you know, we're just banging it out. And, and he would kind of pause and say, yeah, we just, we just did 500 units in, in Dallas on Turtle Creek. And, you know, we're doing a hundred million dollars, you know, and I'm like, right. God, I said, you know, but, but let, let me take this a step further. You got to be proud. You don't have to, but you should be proud for those guys as well, because until you can be proud for other people, 
you're never going to get there. You know, like mm-hmm. you've, you've seen people, I'm sure you've been targeted, Don, like, like, oh, who does he think he is? He's so lucky. Look at what he's doing, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the bigger you get, the bigger target you get. So if you can see somebody bigger than you and appreciate, you know, let them, let them help you level up but also appreciate what they've done and learn from them. I think that's another big psychological thing that, that you have to get past as well. Do you, have you ever experienced that? No, I, I have. And I, and I agree. Um, I, I, I also want to say this too, because it, it goes along with mindset and belief. You know, a lot of people feel like somebody super successful is unapproachable or not willing to teach. Yep. And, um, and I, I love, helping people, um, get, you know, further than where they are or closer to where I'm at. The only caveat is I just don't want people that are going to waste my time. So if somebody's going to come in and commit and they come from a position of service, like how can they add value to what I'm doing? And, um, they're willing to actually, you know, to learn and to take those steps and to be accountable. I'll, I'll invest the time and energy on any day of the week. And I think most people who are successful are like that. You know, a lot of people have this perception that people who are successful are, are guarded or they're jerks and they're really not. They're just, they're guarded and they're jerks to the people who only want to take. And when so you- come well from, yeah. So well said, so well said. I've had hundreds of people call me and say, Henry, I just want to pick your brain, which right. means- I want to get money from you. Right. <laughs> usually, I mean, it usually boils yeah. down to that. I want, your ti- I want your time or your money and I'm not going to give you anything for it. No, you know, absolutely. It, right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of, instead of, Hey, Henry can, you know, how can I serve you? How can I help you? You know, I'm, I'm aspiring entrepreneur here. I'm willing to do the work. You know, can I intern with you? Can I work for you free? Can I work? Can I run your laundry? You know, it's somebody with that attitude. I'm be like, Hey, how can I help you? Same. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Same. I, I'm the exact same way. If you, if I know somebody has a servant's heart and, and I, I was interviewed not too long ago and they asked me, you know, would, would you rather have a high school uh, graduate or even a dropout? versus somebody with their doctorate. And I go, well, it depends on which industry, you know, if, if you need a degree to, to actually have uh, a, a doctor's, uh, you know, where you operate on people or an attorney's license, that's something totally different. But if I've got a high school dropout versus somebody who has their doctorate in philosophy or whatever, and this high school dropout is just kicking butt and taking names and is there to do anything, anytime, any way mm-hmm. with this pit bull mentality versus this guy over here, a girl over here who think they know it all, and our book smart but street stupid. I'll take the high school dropout every time. You know, Agreed. I mean, the, the the best is if you can, you know, get somebody who has both. But I will, I will go with the guy who's going to give it all, give us all, leave nothing on the field, and and mm-hmm. kick ass for you. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, because that's somebody you're going to be able to do business with someday. That's somebody that you're going to be able to collectively make money with someday, and that's something that I get excited about. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. dude. I it's, it's 20 minutes, man. And I, it feels like we've been talking for five. Like I, right. I, I feel like we could go on and on and on. How do people, uh, how do people get a hold of you? Tell me some things that you're doing. You've obviously got it figured out. You speak from your heart and, and you're there to really help people. Uh, tell my listeners how they can, how they can see more of you or get some stuff that you do. Well, I mean, I host a podcast called Flip Talk. Um, I actually have two out, Flip Talk and Flip Talk Rookie Playbook. Um, Both of them talk about real estate investing, all aspects of it from flipping houses to wholesaling to buy and hold. Um, I have some courses out. If you're interested in what we got going on with the courses, you can always email me at don at fliptalk.com. And of course, we have a mastermind community for people who are real estate investors. And you go to beinthisroom.com for that, to check that out. Because of course, you want to be in the room with the right people, right? So, but uh, yeah, a ton of free content out on Facebook. And you can always find me on Instagram at the real Don Costa. So I'm everywhere. The real Don Costa. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, good, man. Hey, thank you so much for, for sharing your heart. I can, again, I can tell you a person who wants to give and, and teach other people what you've learned and keep them out of the school of hard knocks as much as you went through and, and maybe, maybe save them a little time, energy and money. So uh, it's been a blast. I, I know we'll, we'll talk again very soon. And I want to thank you for, uh, for being on my podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. See you later.